everyone, it's Vault Fox. Welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I'm going to be showing you all how I 3D printed and finished up these Mandalorian gauntlets from my husband's Mandalorian cosplay. Ow! <laughs> Thanks again so much to my Patreon supporters for your generous support of my work and my content. And reminder, if you would like to see your name up here, as well as get some behind the scenes content, as well as a look into some of my future builds, you can do that over at patreon.com slash vaultfox. And I want to thank you for watching this video as well. Thank you so much for your support and let's get on to the tutorial. I'm using Galactic Armories files, which I'll link down in the description below for you guys. And the first thing I need to do is get these properly scaled to my husband's arm measurements. I go over this process in my video on scaling helmets, but scaling armor is a little bit different and gauntlets and items like these are a little bit more form fitting and requires a bit more like finesse and a couple more measurements to get the right fit that we're looking for. I take my calipers and first measure the width of his wrist as well as the width of his arm right below the elbow. I then took my calipers and measured the length of his arm where I wanted the entire gauntlet to span. With these measurements in hand, I then open up Mesh Mixer and load in my gauntlet file. For this tutorial, I'll only be showing you the left gauntlet, but I do the same set of steps for the right as well. I'm able to move the gauntlet around by clicking this edit button over on the left and selecting transform. From here, I can rotate the model any which way I would like to. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the file as is at 100% scale. I first click on the analysis button on the left hand side and click on the measure option. From here I select the X axis and for the type I'm selecting this option with the line going through these two circles. And to finish out I select snap to vertices under the snapping drop down menu. Once you do that you'll see this red line pop up around your model. And what I'm going to do here is first swing around the wrist portion of the gauntlet and get that red line situated on the inside wall of one side and stretch it to the opposite inside wall of the wrist. You probably notice on the right side of mesh mixer that you'll see these three numbers and you're just going to want to concern yourself with the one in the middle. Now what you're going to want to do is compare this measurement to your actual wrist measurement you took before and if your actual wrist measurements are lower than the file's internal wrist measurements it's pretty safe to say that your wrist is going to fit through it. Now once you've got the wrist measurement what we're going to want to do is use the same steps to find out the measurements of the opposite end of the gauntlet. Again compare these numbers to your arm's actual measurements to determine if you would need some wiggle room to fit your arm through or if you want the gauntlet to fit a bit tighter to your arm. You can also go one step further and get measurements for the mid part of your arm as well and get those measurements in Mesh Mixer to tune things even further if you'd like. But these gauntlets really don't need to be super form fitting so I didn't end up doing that. The last measurement you'll want to get is the length of your gauntlet and to do that we're just going to go back into the analysis menu and select measure again and just switch the axis to Y. Then again you're just going to take that red line and stretch it from the front to back of your model to determine the overall length and compare it to your own measurements. Now this is the point where you're probably realizing, hey, I'm going to need to scale things up and down a bit. Here's where you can scale up and down your model on all three of the axes. Is that the right way to pluralize axis? I don't know. I don't feel like looking it up. <laughs> you can yell at me in the comments. I don't care. All you need to do to rescale is click on the number one next to whichever axis you're looking to scale. And you're going to go up or down by decimal points in order to rescale it. So for example, let's say I needed to scale this X axis up a bit to give the wrist some more wiggle room. I would then select 1.03 to give me 103 percent scale. Once you've changed your scaling on your axes based, God, I really hope that that's the way that you say multiple axes. Once you've changed the scaling on all of your axes based on your original measurements, select done and your model will rescale to the appropriate size you selected. From here, repeat the same steps as before to get your new internal measurements until they are as close to your arm's actual measurements as you'd prefer. This is really the most annoying part about scaling because it can really take a lot of practice to kind of understand the nuances and really understand just how much a model is being rescaled even whenever you scale it up by like one percent. And now if you want to go one step further you can choose to print out some test slices of your file to confirm the fit. For these gauntlets I would recommend doing a test slice near the wrist opening and the back opening kind of above the elbow. Even better would to be a small slice in the middle of the gauntlet as well. You can then take these slices to confirm if your scaling is correct for what you're going for. In order to get these small slices of your file all you're going to have to do is go under the edit tool on the left hand side and then go down to plain cut. Once you have plain cut open, then it will allow you to slice the model in whatever way you want to. So here I'm just taking the plain cut and going up to the very top of the wrist and like you don't need a lot of it. I would just recommend doing like maybe a centimeter or so on the wrist part as well as on the back part. And then to do the plain cut in the middle if you so choose to do that, you're just going to have to end up making a cut on the bottom as well as the top and then have that 
cut in the middle where you want it to be, if that makes sense. Once you have everything sliced, what you're going to want to do now is go back under the edit tab and then select separate shells. Whenever you click separate shells, it's going to give you all of the individual little slices that you've done. If you click the little eyeball next to each little portion, you can see it kind of come and go. And then you can export each individual piece of this as its own little thing to print out to see if they fit. With all of our scaling dialed in, it is finally time to get these on the print bed. And after a few days, I'm left with two gauntlets that I severely did not want to sand because if there's one thing I don't enjoy sanding, it's shit like this. <laughs> also, my printers were in major need of tuning at this point, so no making fun of the quality here. It's just gonna get sanded anyways. For the smoothing and sanding of these gauntlets, I went with photopolymer resin. I first started by making sure I had my respirator on, some gloves, as well as goggles, and I was working in a well-ventilated area. I started by painting on a layer all over both gauntlets and let that UV resin cure out in the sun for 15 minutes. After they were done curing, I wiped them down with some 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean up any uncured resin and went back in with another layer of UV resin. I then let that cure for another 15 minutes before wiping it down again with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Then we're finally getting into the fun part of sanding. <laughs> I started with 120 grit sandpaper on my mouse sander and sanded both gauntlets down as best as I could. You could probably utilize a Dremel as well to get into some of the harder to reach areas and I ended up doing a little bit of that as well as some hand sanding off camera to get into such areas. After I was happy with the first pass of sanding, I gave them both a coat of 2-in-1 automotive filler primer. Also, if you have any leftover tomato cages from a failed garden venture like we do, they make some pretty cheap painting racks. I let these gauntlets cure overnight, but you could probably get at them with some sandpaper after about an hour if you so desire. For the second round of sanding, I'm aiming to get as many of these rough bits sanding down to the rest of the gauntlet by using a higher grit of sandpaper on my mouse sander, this time 180 grit. I'm being very careful to try and not put too much pressure on my mouse sander so that I'm not ripping into the filler primer that we just sprayed on. This is also so I don't end up creating more work for myself in needing to fill in divots and dents later. I wasn't getting as clean of a finish as I liked with just the mouse sander alone, so I ended up taking both of the gauntlets inside and did a little bit of wet sanding with some 220 grit wet sanding sheets. Once I'd wet sanded everything, I then towel dried them both off and let them air dry overnight. I then gave them another coat of two-in-one filler priming that next morning. After letting that layer cure for around an hour, I was finally happy with the finish enough to get started with painting. For the base layer on these pieces, I'm going in with my Montana Gold Shock Black, but you can use whatever black you prefer. And again, I'm spraying way too close to these armor pieces. Don't be like me, back up a bit and spray six to eight inches away from your stuff to avoid drips in your paint job. I then let both of these pieces cure for a full 24 hours before going in with my glossy clear coat to prep for the chrome. I go over the entire process and safety procedures of using 2K clear coat in this video here, but on the gauntlets, I'm just giving them a quick first coat of 2K clear coat, letting that cure for five minutes, then going back in with another thin coat and letting that cure for another five minutes before giving it a final wet glossy coat and letting that cure for a full 72 hours. After 72 hours, the pieces are safe to handle. And again, I can't get over just how glossy and smooth this stuff gets your pieces. Again, wish it wasn't $25 a can, but the results are pretty nice. <laughs> now that our pieces are prepped, we can finally get to painting them and I'm going to be using my airbrush as well as All Clad's Chrome. This color is a bit brighter than the screen use Illumiluster, but I personally liked it. And you have to remember that lighting plays a huge factor in how paint and fabric looks to our eyes. I'm spraying on a thin coat as evenly as I possibly can, going in short bursts from side to side with my airbrush. Make sure that you're also wearing a respirator with this stuff because it's crazy stinky and crazy bad to breathe in. Once I'm happy with the paint job, I let everything sit for 24 hours before going in with my clear coat. And again, I know you guys have heard me talk about this before, but my clear coat application did not work. I sprayed on two thin coats of All Clad's Glossy Clear Coat and what I really think it needed was a final thicker coat of the stuff to really seal it in. And after letting that clear coat cure for 24 hours, these gauntlets are finally ready to wear. You also might notice that I didn't add any LEDs into these like whistling birds here and that's simply because I didn't want to. There are some modelers out there who have these gauntlets broken down a little bit further to where you can add in some lights if you wanted to. And even these ones you could add in like some little LEDs if you really wanted. But I just, again, I didn't want to and my husband was totally fine with me and not adding LEDs. You don't have to add more stress to your costumes if you don't want to. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, if you have any other questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. And I'll see you all back here for another Mandalorian tutorial. Bye.